All right. Praise God. Sorry about that, streamers. We were running behind, got caught up in revelation and <laughs> getting revelation with the girls that our team here. So, But we're going to get started. I'm going to try and make this quick because kids, they're, um, like I was telling a sister right now, their attention span is really short. So um, let me start off by praying and then... Uh, We'll get started, okay? So, Father, we praise you and thank you, God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Ghost, in this time of children's deliverance, Lord. And not just for children, Lord, but also for families, God. We thank you, Father, that, God, you don't just stop with children, but you start with with parents, with family, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the anointing, Lord God, that destroys yokes and removes burdens, Lord God. So, Father, we just honor you, Lord God. We submit ourselves to you today. And, Lord, Lord, move me out of the way, Lord God, and have your way, Holy Spirit. Use my lips, Holy Ghost. And we thank you right now, Father, for this uh, this time of learning and, and receiving. And, Lord, bless our ears to hear our minds to, uh, to receive, our hearts to receive, Lord God, and give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, children's deliverance, um, there is a lot that goes on with kids. Believe it or not, um, there's a lot of uh, unbelievers in churches. I mean, obviously, you guys know what, if you go to church, people will say, Kid, kids can't have demons. There's no way. They're already unbelieving as far as like even Christians having demons, but kids, how dare you? I've had a lot of people get offended by, by that. Um, especially family members. If I pray for them, um, they refuse for me to, to pray. Uh, like my sister, for example, like she's like, how dare you? How dare you? So, um, you just continue to pray in the background, intercede, right? And just believe God will touch them some, some way. So children's deliverance, um, I was learning from Brother Mike through his teaching. And then this is our book, if you guys ever want. Uh, this is the book that we go by, is the Children's Deliverance, a manual for children's deliverance by Frank and Ida May. We have them in, uh, on sale in the, in the bookstore. Um, I think really they're pioneers for the, the children's deliverance because they have such in-depth descriptions on what demons especially attack the kids so um so reading or listening to brother mike and then also combining this is is it's really good to just um just soak it up right so key number one for issue for children they are human sponges so you have the little toddlers the babies even brother mike talks about the 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 babies in the womb they feel their spirits know and they feel emotions from their mamas they feel they receive their human sponges their spirits know what's going on what's being spoken over them they god created us that way we're sensitive to the spirit realm especially being a christian now if you were if you were spiritually sensitive before you got saved then you can imagine coming into the kingdom that the heightens that spirit realm um they learn by example so the key issue is with children, they learn by example, they learn by imitation. The parents are responsible for the raising of the children. If, in Proverbs uh, 22, 6, everyone knows that scripture, train up a child in there and, and they will not depart from them, right? Train up the child in the, in the Lord's ways. I'm kind of paraphrasing. But if, you, if we don't raise them God's way, the devil will raise them for you. So Deuteronomy 6, 7, these are just scriptures that, um, that uh, Brother Mike shared with us in, in his teaching. Deuteronomy 6, 7, if you have um, pen and paper, you can write them down. Proverbs 23, 13 through 14. Proverbs 13, 24. Codependent mothers are, person, uh, are prison fillers. They are dangerous. Codependent mothers are prison fillers. They are dangerous. You've got to be careful being a mother who's codependent with your children. Um, moms, they love, they love so much. And, um, brother Mike, I love his teaching cause I got a revelation of how important it is to be a mother, to get out of the way of your children and the, uh, allowing the Lord, especially grown children. But you know, you, you got to allow the children for God to, to do what he needs to do. Right. And, um, codependent mamas, they, they, they kind of get in the way cause they enable, they, you know, they, um, 
okay, honey, here, here you go. You know, it's kind of like, I, I can't do it. I, I love them too much. It's, it's, it hurts, you know, it hurts moms to see their babies go through stuff, right? So children's, and the children's responsibility, I'm going to go ahead and read that from Ephesians 6, 1. So mamas and daddies got responsibility, but um, God gives the children responsibility. And because this is children's ministry, I'm going to read this scripture. Ephesians 6, 1 from the Amplified Bible. Let me see. All right. Is this it? All right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, ex- that is accept their guidance. The, d- the description of obeying your parents is accepting their guidance and discipline as God's representatives. For this is right. This is uh, the, for obe- obeying the teachings and wisdom of self-discipline. That's good, right? That's good. So how do, how do you get a child infected with demons? Or how do uh, children get infected? Uh, this is a listing Brother Mike gave. Family anger. So you have no love and severe rejection in the family. Fear, severe fear, anxiety, the sins that bring curses. Um, unwanted pregnancies, that's a curse. Uh, abortions, adoption, substance abuse, rejection of the fetus, word curses over the fetus, family occults. This is uh, from family anger is definitely a number one because you have lots of children that are in the middle of parents uh, fighting one another. You know, there's so much anger and uh, family anger and um, fighting amongst them. So the kids, it comes in fear spirits, anger spirits. They start seeing the mom get hurt, oh, fear, I, what's my mom, oh, I'm so sorry for my mom, it hurts them when they see their mom get hurt, so the pain, all that stuff, right, they feel the, the it's soul wounds that start entering in, um, conception sins, uh, drug rape, lust, pregnancy, one night stands, office affairs, marital rape, These are conception sins. That's how uh, babies get infected. Uh, Birth trauma, prolonged labor, oxygen deficiency, wrapped umbilical cords, C-sections, premature reactions to inducing labor with drugs, forceps, complications. Babies can get demons from that. Child abuse, the number uh, number one way of infecting children with demons. Emotional, no affection and no compliments. Let me say that again. Emotionally, babies get, uh, children will feel no affection or compliments, and the enemy is willing to come on in and uh, take advantage of that. They feel rejection from the parents if they, um, it, they have an expectation that they have, in, well within their right, they have an expectation to receive um, affection, praise. That's because they're probably not old enough to, to know that God loves them at that point. Of course, you teach them. But parents, you have, we have a responsibility to fill in that emotional uh, connection, right? Um, if they feel no affection, no compliments from their parents. Verbal, nagging, criticism, cursing. Uh, you nag your kids to kingdom come. Uh, criticism. You criticize their dress. You criticize, I mean, well within your right, you do it in a loving way. If you're telling them, you know, what is that called? The, the, uh, when you're trying to correct, not criticize. We know the difference. Yeah, kind of like nagging. It's, it's you're, tra- you're trying to correct, but then there's another part where there's nagging, and it's just, it's a critical spirit. You don't want to have a critical spirit with kids because they feel there's a spirit behind it. But you have that correction, too, where, no, sweetheart, that is a blue sock with a yellow sock. That's not going to go. Well, mom, that's, that's the style. Okay, well, if it's the style, all right. But you're, you're kind of like, no, sweetheart, um, let's, let's go ahead and, and wear these shoes because those shoes are too small. You know, what are you going to, as opposed to, what are you doing? Like, you know, you have that spirit. You, can, you already know that. There's a spirit behind that. They're, they feel the rejection from that. So codependency, again, spoiled enabling don't spoil the babies right you're you're what is that the scripture uh spoil the spare the rod spoil the child um incest of course that's that's huge a lot of kids nowadays because of pornography 
because of pornography in the home, they're incested. Uh, I was a victim of incest because of pornography and, um, and drug, drug abuse. And um, the s- sexual fondling or intercourse with the kids, of course, spirits come in. That trauma from being fondled in the middle of the night, that terror comes in when that door opens. It's like you know, that terror, that, that trauma, like, oh no, it's going to happen again. You know, you're anticipating it. The enemy works your emotions to this fear, you know. So childhood stressors, nightmares, bad dreams, physical trauma, believe it or not, when they break their arm or their ankle, that can happen with, with the enemy coming in and and um, bringing in demons because of physical trauma. Or of course, you know, your that can also lead to because of beatings or um, being beat. Nightmares and bad dreams. Repetitive bad dreams. Sibling torment and beatings. Believe it or not, older siblings can, do, can allow the enemy to come in because they, they torment them. They're, you know, Kelly, she, she talks about her older brother always beating her up and messing with her all the time. I, it was all in fun. The way he treated her, it was, it was I, on the other hand... <laughs> beat my brother where it was just rage and anger and i you know i've repented and i asked the lord please heal my brother from that um but i know now going back i i can tell what kind of spirit was behind that um school and peer pressure school and peer pressure come on guys what about school right like it's it's you see all these things going on where the enemy is trying to bring in all that fear from school shootings um you know, different things that come up in the, in the situations where they're bullied, you know. Um, and bullying basically comes because the kid is rejected. Frequent relocation. So you have your, um, you have your military, military kids, right? Um, poor self-concept comes with frequent relocations. You, they can't develop decent, re, they can't develop recent, uh, decent relationships. It's really hard for them. So they kind of reject people that may try and become their friend because they, there's no way, they're like, well, we're going to leave anyway, so why should I become, a, become your friend? Um, again, watching parents fight, they get ang- the, the anger spirits, they watch their parents, and they're just like witnessing all this chaos and confusion and all that stuff. Imaginary personalities are developed in kids who are rejected in childhood control in this world they feel in control when they develop an imaginary world um i've known two kids that have developed an imagine we've had to tell the parent look that's not that's not of god you know this is a demon coming to them this is a spirit that's befriending them a familiar spirit so um i pray i pray that uh, one of them brother uh brother robert ministered to them and that spirit left Praise God. He doesn't talk to that spirit anymore. Um, Invisible friends, dolls, trolls, violent action figures, scary movies, scary movie figures, stuffed animals, tooth fairy, boogeyman, genies. Um, These are just, uh, again, these are familiar spirits. The the Bible talks about, um, not the specific, but he does go into uh, about the occult is attached to these spirits. like dolls and uh, the occult is attached to things like that. Physical traumas, again, going to sports or auto accidents, surgeries, blended families, uh, serious illnesses, long-term chronic pain, contaminated blood transfusions, meds, and abusive spankings. Um, Deaths, Uh, someone close to the child dies, Um, a parent, a step-parent, Pets, siblings, friends and teachers, nannies, babysitters, um, they, we have to know to minister to the children if they experience the uh, death of a family member or somebody close to them. Don't just, you know, oh, it's okay. You know, you're, you want to minister. You want to actually take some time to minister to them and, and, and let them know, okay, this is what the Bible says about death. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to release that person if you were close to them, especially Brother Mike gives a testimony about his grandmother passing away and he didn't know, he didn't, he didn't have anybody to turn to. 
And his experience was traumatizing because that was the only person that loved him. He didn't have a home full of affection and love. Both parents were drunks. They were alcoholics. But the grandmother was the only one who showed him affection, and she passed. So it got even worse for him. He got even deeper in rejection, and no one was there for him. So he felt this loneliness. He, you know, he, he, he uh, testified how he just went into a depression almost when he was a little kid, just a little kid. So, um, yeah, so we've got, we got to know how to minister to the children when they lose family members and, and, and even pets. Um, so we are, uh, mental illness demons, these are ADHD, teenage rage, bipolar, autism, uh, all of these right here, ADHD, teenage rage, bipolar, autism, is a deep sense of rejection. They come in through the deep sense of rejection and fear triggers the wounds. So when you have a child who has ADHD or teenage rage, bipolar, autism, he's, uh, Mike has counseled many people and he says that it, was, it comes in from a deep sense of rejection with fear that triggers wounds. Um, but he also says uh, there's, autism can also be a, a powerful demon. Um, there's a, the child in, in Luke nine thirty nine the, uh, the one that was where the father says, help my unbelief. He, the Lord discerned that it was from a generational curse. It was throwing him in the fire and throwing him in the water, trying to kill him. And, and the Lord discerned, no, this is a generational curse. So let's, let's go ahead and, and, uh, cast that thing out. But he told the disciples later, this one come later comes, this one comes out by prayer and fasting. Um, the lunatic child, he is, the symptoms are he's vexed, uh, emotional pain or illnesses. Um, it takes him over. It, you, you recognize that the spirit was taking this kid over where he had no control. It made him foam, uh, bruises on his body. He pined, wasting away, no eating. He was like pretty much not eating. He gnashed and grinded his teeth. Um, he, it cast him self-destruction. So you see the self-destruction, childhood illnesses, ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, ADD, clinical depression, autism, dyslexia, Down syndrome, mental retardation. Disciples couldn't cast out the demon. So, um, so again, Jesus went on and told them it was because of the unbelief. But um, again, he went back and told them it's, it's because we have to pray and fast to cast this one out. So children are the keys to our freedom because we must be like them. Manifestations of children being delivered. So, so as we go on, we, uh, if, when we start doing the prayer and deliverance for the children, children, they, you'll, they'll tear, they'll tear up. Most of the time they'll tear. Um, when they're little, when they're really tiny, they start screaming and reaching for their mother. Um, They'll start yawning and coughing. Spit will start coming out. Crying. Um, wringing of the hands. Rubbing the feet together. Shaking or, or um, vibrating. That's the manifestations in kids most of the time. So we have to have permission from the guardian or the parent. We speak directly to the spirit. We will not speak to the children. Sometimes we'll, uh, in deliverance, when we uh, minister to the adults, we speak to the adults and we ask them, children, uh, to, to repent or, or forgive. You do that with older children, but the younger children, they didn't really do, they don't understand. They don't have the rationality of us adults or even older children. So you have to speak directly to the spirit. And a lot of the times the parents are kind of confused because they're like, why are you yelling at my kid? You know, but it's not, we're not yelling at the kid. We're, we're, it, we're coming against that fear, fear, come out. You know, it's like, but the, the kids are cooperative when they understand what's going on. Again, the kids are like, prop. I love kids because they, they're just ready to go. Like, yeah, let's do this. You know, uh, <laughs> That's my cousin right there. How do demons try to stop deliverance? So again, they reach for their parents. Mom, they're hurting me. Oh, we've heard that one plenty of times. They're hurting me. 
But it's the demon speaking out of the kids. Uh, reaching for parents, saying negative things. You know, again, you're hurting me. Stop it. Shut up. Leave me alone. Uh, crying for parents. Uh, they clamped their mouth. This happened to uh, last children's deliverance. This little girl was like, mm mm. But it wasn't her, it was a spirit. But that comes also with behavior. So I had to um, let the mother know, look, you need to take authority over her right now. Tell her she needs to be obedient to what we're telling her, right? Um, clamping of the mouth shut. Prying on mother's sympathy. Well, this one's like huge right here. Like mom's hurting for, why? you know, oh my God. You know, they're just, they're feeling that. So it's like, no, you got to be strong. You got to be strong. Rebelling against instructions again with that clamping of the mouth. So the best way to get children delivered is we go first. Adults always have to go first, right? But I kind of wanted to share real quick. Um, the Lord put it on my heart to, to share this part of the, the deliverance too for kids. The battle for the imagination, toys and games, movies, all of that. Anything that they're watching on uh, YouTube, um, scary movies, we gotta, uh, um, we've got to pay close attention. And this is for streamers. If no one here is dealing with that, um, somebody's watching. We've got to be careful and watch what our kids are watching. They've got to understand that these are doorways. Uh, especially for older kids, there's doors that are opened um, to the mind. So the, the Lord says, the gates, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, right? Kids, your eyes, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth are gates. So we have to understand that these things that you're listening to on the radio, the music that you're listening to, the movies that you're watching, and things that you're speaking out of your mouth is an, an invitation. It's an invitation. This is for adults too, but this is, a, they love to come after kids because they don't want, they want to make sure that they destroy the, 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 the child's life, right, first of all. But they don't want them to come into, for when they grow older, what God has called them to do. They don't want to, them to fulfill what God has called them to do, right? So they will, they will stop at nothing to get into the mind, to get into the soul, to get into the body. So they, they, find, they find ways. They're, they're, it's huge right now. YouTube, um, video games, it's, it's huge. So this is an old book. Um, it was written a really long time ago. Uh, there's, a, there's a little... Um, short thing that the the person that wrote this part is it was about nintendo so you can imagine how old it was <laughs> so but nintendo so uh what is it called sony playstation all of their they're all the same so <laughs> this one uh this lady says there is a war going going on against the children in almost every area of their lives entertainment is one major area so again we talked about the, the movies we talked about the video games and music guys oh my goodness that music i believe video games are one of the main tools being used by satan to seduce to hypnotize to desensitize and addict the children they are confronted with excessive and extreme violence as well as the occult in these games. As a result, violent action, even murder, has victimized some of the children. This is a Newsweek uh, magazine that says it, oh, they wrote about Nintendo. The Nintendo craze hypnotized a generation. So imagine a magazine that's secular saying that about a video game, right? Like, a, a, like Nintendo. Isn't that weird? Um, so we got to think about what we're doing. Hold on. We got to think about what, what's going on in the home, right? Um, if a secular magazine is saying that. So Satan is very uh, active with his deceptive tactics. It is obvious that he has targeted our present generation of children and the youth. He's infiltrating the minds, the emotions, the bodies, and the spirits of the young children with spiritual poison of materialism, the occult, and Eastern religious philosophy. So... Uh, this is a really good point. Subconsciously, the child is invulnerable and suggestible to the voices that will speak to him or her in the later years to reject Christ and embrace paganism. So, oh, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. It's just a video game. But when these spirits get in there, this is what they're doing. They're subconsciously invading these children as they're vulnerable at this age, right? 
they're suggesting these voices to them that they will e either way they'll they'll accept these voices and they'll say in later years to reject christ this is this is better eastern mysticism oh you can get some power from that you know who's christ you know if you didn't know about christ then they, then they'll turn to something they want to they want to worship something um so what should parents do whose children are already attached to some of the things we have mentioned? First, he's, first, parents have to be convinced in their heart and mind that these things are evil and have no place in the children's lives. You cannot act in faith in, an, in another person's conviction. You must have your own conviction. There are other Christian writers who are voicing the same warnings. Secondly, pray for God's wisdom and guidance as to how to inform your children that you are now opposing what you have previously approved or tolerated. It is very unwise to destroy or throw out or ban things to which your children are strongly attached to without proper preparation through parental repentance and thorough communication. Unless a child has understanding that brings him to the place of cooperation, more harm than good can result. For example, watching questionable television programs with your child, analyzing them, and then judging them in the light of truth. Examine together the weird names and terminology associated with uh, toys, games, books, and music. Thirdly, replace evil things with good things. Be certain that a vacuum is not left in your child's life. They, he has a right to play things in entertainment. The parent's responsibility is to see that these are edifying and wholesome. Fourth, take time, to, uh, take time daily to instill the principles of God's word into the mind and conscience of your child. Set the right example before them. Teach them to love the Lord with all of his heart, his soul, his mind, and his strength. God's advice to the families of Israel through Moses is especially timely today. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Amen? So, um, this was a good point too. How does it happen that children that uh, have demons in the first place, since parents are the protectors and providers for their offspring, the presence of evil spirits in a child is to a large degree a reflection of the parents. Demons cannot enter in. Demons cannot enter unless doors of opportunity are open to them. Parents are, uh, parents are the gatekeepers, the guardians, and the maintainers. When a child has demons, it indicates that the parents either did something wrong or neglected to fulfill their responsibility. Now, God's mercy and grace. Thank God, right? Um... Now, this is not to bring condemnation to anyone. Praise God that he's, he's, deliverance is available for us, right? Um, the majority of us parents readily admit that we are guilty of mistakes and neglect. However, this is no time for guilt. That's what they say. There is help from God, and the important thing is that we take advantage of the grace of God. Poured out through the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. Deliverance is deliverance from the benefits of the cross. So, um, just a quick testimony. We'll get started. Um, my cousin Tanya's little girl or her oldest, she's in college now, but um, can I tell her, tell this testimony? Uh, the testimony is that they, the little girl was seeing a demon. How old was she? Four? Alexis was four years old, and none of us were serving the Lord. <laughs> we were all pretty much partying at her house all the time. And uh, so, of course, we all... Uh, freely brought in the spirit we actually don't even know where this spirit came from but it was tormenting her every night and um i knew about deliverance i was in, i was a backslider at that time crazy we were all backsliders basically the her her and her ex-husband were together at that time but this is what i mean about god's mercy and grace i said okay this is what we're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna do a spiritual cleansing through this house <laughs> i'm not gonna do anything i'm gonna just tell you what to do because i I don't want this thing following me. Um, but they did it by faith. They did it. The parents by faith. God honored their faith to go through the house and clean the house out on behalf of their daughter. She never saw that demon again. The next day, she felt she was fine. She was free. It was God's mercy. So remember, parents, it's by God's grace, by God's mercy. Right? I mean, of course, by faith, we... We submitted to what God wanted, you know, for on her behalf, on her behalf. 
We were like, Lord, we, have, we don't really serve you. <laughs> we are not in a place to love you. What? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, at the time, Mario, the ex-husband did at that time. Did, he led. He actually was like, I can't stand my baby going through this. So um, it was terrible. The, the, she was so scared of that spirit. She, huh? It was months that she was being tormented. I don't know what happened, how we t started talking about it, but it, it came up, and I was like, okay, guys, we got to do something about this. But I'm, I'm not going to take the lead. Mario took the lead, which was the ex-husband, but he did it by faith. And God honored the prayers <laughs> of the mom and dad. I mean, that's how powerful parents are, really. In the spirit realm, the parents have more authority than the deliverance minister, right? So, um, and through faith, we, we got rid of that. The Lord got rid of that spirit, and it was a really powerful time. So, that should encourage us. On behalf of um, the babies, we're doing this. Lord, I'm fighting this baby. I don't know what this is, but I'm fighting the grace and mercy of God. And how much more? How much more of those for us believe, as believers? When we, I was, I was in, I, I was like, I was angry at God at that time. But I knew about deliverance at that time. Um, but how much more? How much more did God? Would God honor those of us who want to do it right? So. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started and pray and, and just ask the Lord um, on the parents' behalf first. So if um, the parents want to just, well, actually, you know what? We'll just get started on, on um, we'll just start. So, uh, team, since the, I'm thinking just because there's so, so few of us, we'll just get started and just pray. All right, let's do it. So let's, whoever the, the child is with the, the parent, we'll just pray with you. And streamers, just, I pray that the, the word penetrated and that it um, helped you. I hope I didn't go too fast. Again, it was because the benefits of the children, <laughs> their, <laughs> their mind kind of wanders after a while. So, all right. So praise God. We're going to start praying for the baby well this is not a baby right here but <laughs> for the kids and the parents all right thank you jesus YouTubers, thank you for tuning in to today's Children's Deliverance. We had two families here, one who had a uh, rebellious daughter who was disobedient to the commands of the mother, and uh, she's going through a beautiful deliverance right now. Mom went through a deliverance of rejection, and a young boy, Jacob, is going through getting delivered of watching the ghost movies. He's been having night terrors that have been haunting him. 
and he's now desensitized through watching them. He no longer is creepy. He says it, it's no longer creepy to him when he watches during the day, but now they're coming to visit him at night. And this young boy who's up front, he's going through deliverance right now, and we just thank you for all the prayers for our children. Sometimes we don't understand that we allow these things to penetrate the minds of the young kids, and later in life it desensitizes them. The spirits come in and tell them that it's okay. It's okay to watch, and then they need to watch more intense stuff, more entertaining stuff, to get that stimulation, the dopamine response. We thank you for today for watching. We thank you for all your support and all your love. Uh, join us uh, next Saturday. It won't be on YouTube, but if you have anybody who needs prayer, there's no appointment necessary. We'll be here from 9 to 3 next Saturday. And uh, no appointment necessary. The team will be here to pray for you and uh, be watching. God bless.